the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light. That it was good. Tell me about this Fiddler documentary. Um, we had to do a documentary on just something that we were interested in. Mm -hmm. You know, I thought that was the, the best thing, find something that I was interested in, and hopefully then I could help people watching it be interested in the same thing. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about when we go for walks at Robinson Preserve, and there's all these little fiddler crabs, and they scurry around and disappear in these holes, but there's just thousands and thousands and thousands of them, and... Uh, you know, we see them for a second, and all the rest of the time they're in the hole or they're scurrying around, and just I know nothing about them. So I thought maybe if I would just go set up some cameras and, and take a look at them and hopefully catch some interesting behaviors, I'd learn something about them. So did you run into any trouble? Yeah, I, uh, so I packed up. You know, we, we had uh, different things got in the way of the shooting schedule, so I finally had a Saturday to go out there, and uh, I packed up the car and threw everything in the baby stroller. And I get out there, and I forgot to bring um, fresh videotapes <laughs> <laughs> for the camera. So then I end up, well, I had the 35 millimeter uh, so I could shoot with a DSLR, mm -hmm. um, but then I didn't have the shotgun mic or anything. So it was just footage. I had a, a little um, GoPro waterproof camera. I, would, I taped to a hockey stick and stuck down at crab level, but I, I didn't realize that um, it focuses like four feet away. So everything that was six inches away that I wanted clear was all blurry, but it, it still made interesting footage for the end. And, and uh, so just a lot of things that were really probably novice traits that um, I need to remember and learn from <laughs> that didn't go well. And uh, oh, the, oh the, the whole first hour and a half or so, I'm set up on one side of this bridge where I see all these holes and the fiddler crabs just didn't want to come out at all. And I look on the other side of the bridge and these massive fiddler crabs are all walking around like like it's a carnival. So then I, I switched to that side and it was very, they were very cooperative after that. What is the real voice or the message of the fiddler documentary? Um, probably just as much about me or documentaries as it is about the fiddler crabs themselves. I mean, there's stuff to learn and there's stuff I'm, I'm never going to be able to see what happens in the hole. Um, you know, which so much of their life is down there. You know, I'm never going to be able to interview them. I can only, uh, you know, get information offline or, or ask people and, and observe some stuff and make some guesses. Um, I guess the, the real voice is just one of uh, curiosity and asking questions, I guess, is what I'd... You know, right now I'm, I'm thinking I'd love to do a whole bunch of short uh, documentaries on different things at Robinson Preserve, different animals, and see if maybe it's something they'd want to put on their website and uh, just to promote it there to, to get people curious because now that I've done this, even though I don't necessarily have more answers to my own personal questions about them, just curiosities... Um, I'm more interested in observing them and, and making mental notes about them and the other things there that, uh, that I see. Tell me some of the facts you found. Well, there's about 94 species of crab that all fall into the fiddler crab um, family. They're called fiddler crabs because of that one, one really big claw that they don't eat with, and uh, the little claw that's always moving to feed them looks like they're playing the bow across hmm. their fiddle-like claw. Uh, the males have one big claw, and uh, like I said, they can only eat with the smaller one. The big claw is not good for anything except waving it around and trying to attract a mate or ward off competition. So you'll notice on the footage that um, the, the female 
crabs that have two small front claws. They take their time eating because they can eat with both hands. But the male ones with the big claw, they can only eat with the other hand. And mm. what they eat is um, it's organic matter that's on, on sand and mud and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And you'll see the little tiny brown light tan balls of mud um, that they've gone over um, outside their holes. And they go down and they dig out mud from their hole and they bring it up and they push it out. And the males can use their big claw kind of like a bulldozer mm. and push that out of the way. Um, but it's amazing. They go down the hole. They get a hole, you know, like a, a clump almost as big as their shell that they bring up and then they'll do a couple more. Then they'll switch sides like they'll go down the other way facing the other direction and dig out the hole that way. And uh, for homes... They have to continually moisten their gills so they actually dig their holes below water level. So even though their whole top is on dry land, the hole goes down to where it's always moist so they can moisten their gills. Mm. I think it's cool too when you see them go in the hole that their their eyes, which stick up on stems, they fold down into a, a little recessed groove on the front of them. They fold them flat so they can go down the hole and not drag their eyeballs along <laughs> the dirt. Um, the other thing I think that's uh, really interesting, besides all the, the mating rituals and everything, I think it's so cool that if they lose the big claw, um, because they're like any other crab and they molt, they continually grow and they molt their shells, um, the small claw will start to enlarge to take its place, and what used to be the big claw will now become the small claw. So they'll switch sides. Um, where I think that's very cool. They're found mostly like in mangroves or salt marshes, or on sandy or muddy beaches, um, different places around the world too. West Africa, the Western Atlantic, Eastern Pacific, and the Indo-Pacific. What are you going to take away from this? Well, I guess I wanted to learn about the fiddler crabs, but I think I learned more from the fiddler crabs. You know, um, the the music from this was all taken from a, a CD that Mike Oldfield made, and he's the guy that's probably most famous for Tubular Bells, the music that he wrote that was used for The Exorcist, the original Exorcist. But in the beginning, he's got the voice of an astronaut when he was up um, circling the, the moon who read from Genesis 1 about in the beginning. And from his point of view, looking down, at creation differently, it gave a different perspective. I think just watching them, after reading stuff about how their little idiosyncrasies, these crabs, and uh, and their behaviors, and the way things happen, um, I guess I'm just more intrigued with creation. You know, I um, you know, everybody has their own own view on how things got here whether it was a Big Bang or a creator, and I, I look at it and it's just so detailed and so full of character and personality that I don't think that would happen by itself. And uh, so I think probably more just a sense of wonder. You know, I started with curiosity and I don't have more answers, I don't have the answers for that, but I end up with a, in a renewed sense of wonder at the at the creation, even these little, little crazy two-inch fiddler crabs running around.